Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I'm going to show you secrets for layering rich and luxurious brown, golden brown and bronze paints to create a complex gel print with a little bit of glitter spread on top. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. Welcome to the studio. Today I have been playing with browns and bronze. Um, oftentimes I'm always using bright colors and in my collage work, I do need browns and bronze, especially when I'm doing landscapes. So this combination of some iridescent, uh, sparkly stuff. Also, I'm going to use some gold stickles glitter gel. I'm just going to make a beautiful kind of warm brown, slightly metallic print that I could use in landscape or for any number of collage elements. And the key to this is layer, 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 layer. So I'm going to be using burnt umber light, iridescent bronze fine and everybody's favorite quinacridone nickel azo gold if you don't have bronze you could certainly use gold but i do like the way that the bronze is a little bit more towards brownish metallic whereas gold is more towards yellow italic so um metallic <laughs> um so I like the, the bronze uh, for this because it's a little bit more brown and less yellow. Um, so Burn Umber Light, Iridescent Bronze, and Quinn Nickel Azo Gold. So I've got those set aside here. I've got my Stickles Glitter Gel. Um, this is uh, almost impossible to read. I will put the name of it uh, below the video along with all the other supplies. There's a little name over here and I don't know what it is and I'm sure it's not gold because it's going to be a lot more creative than that. Um, so all the product links will be in the uh, description box below the video. And for the stickles, this is a beautiful glitter gel. If you're not familiar, the glitter is suspended in the gel and it's also got some interesting shapes. So it's got some chunky stars in it and a little bit of color other than gold. So those little chunks of stars and some of the interspersed colors, like I can see a little purple in there, it's just beautiful stuff. So the great thing about this is it's suspended in gel glue. So it is not messy at all. It does not get all over your floor. It does not track with your shoes through the house. You just spread it in the gel glue. The um, gel dries clear and flexible. So when you bend and tear your prints, the glitter is not falling off. This is really, really great in terms of not making a mess. So, and I love the chunky sh glittery shapes in there besides just the little bits. Okay. So, and this comes in all kinds of different colors. It's one of my favorite things. And we're going to add this at the end with the palette knife, just like a little icing on top. So don't let me forget to do that. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, and another note about this. It takes a bit of time to dry. Even though we spread it thin, it takes a little bit to dry the gel glue. So just be sure to lay it out flat and don't pile papers on top of it. The way we can often pile on top with gel prints, we can they dry so fast, we can just pile them right up right away. When you add this, you want to set it aside and let it dry. Okay, so I'm using two of my um, stencils slash masks for joggles.com. This is a stencil. It's called Racing Spots. And this is, uh, I guess you could also consider this a stencil. And this is called Chunky Spirals. And the difference, once again, between stencils and masks is a stencil, the pattern is created by the holes. A mask, so in, in same as this one, it's created by the the holes. In a mask, the pattern is created by the positive plastic. I hesitate on this one because we also have a, st a spiral pattern created by the positive plastic as much as we do by the holes. So this one could go either way. But you can see in a mask, the pattern is created by the plastic and not the holes. And in this one is definitely without a doubt a stencil because the pattern is created by the holes. Okay, so chunky spirals chunky spirals, and racing spots. I am also using my 9x12 pad of rice paper. I'm missing the cover. Um, but this is my favorite uh, paper for the gel plate. It has one smooth side, and it is that smooth side that you want to put down on the plate because it pulls all the paint off almost every time. So also, I, I love this for collage because it's highly absorbent, 
it soaks up the glue and it glues down flat. Even when you put on a big sheet, like I have been doing lately in backgrounds, it glues down completely flat without any bubbles because it's highly absorbent. And the glue soaks right into the backside, which is even uh, rough and really soaks in the glue. So this is a wonderful pad of paper. Also, as far as rice papers go, this is thick and durable. A lot of rice papers you get online, they're very thin, they're like tissue. They won't take a lot of water or a lot of layers of gel printing. They tear easily. This is a fantastic rice paper pad. And until the 19th of February, this is on sale 25% off at Joggles. That sale ends on the 19th of February. I will give you a link below the video. Okay, so we got all that out of the way. The first thing we're gonna do is make two light colored solid sheets one for the intended print and then one for the ghost print cleanup stuff to go on to because you should always print your ghost print cleanup extras on something that you can use because that sheet will also become interesting and i'm also going to put that on the rice paper i'm not going to put it on printer paper copy paper because i want to use it in my collage work so i'm always going to use a cleanup sheet of a good sheet of paper because you never know what's going to happen on there so the base layer is going to be quinacridone nickel azo gold i always work on a light colored solid so we're going to start that we're gonna roll it out with the six inch Speedball Deluxe Brayer. This brayer is amazing because you can clean it. You can soak it in Murphy's Oil Soap and you can peel all the paint off of the whole barrel and get it right back to the rubber that it was when you bought it. That makes it last forever. Okay, so Nicolazzo Gold, smooth side of the paper and you can feel the difference, very obvious with the feel. Smooth side of the paper down on the gel plate and we're making our first light colored solid and you can see when i pull this it is pulling all the paint off except for where it's got a couple of divots um and i'm right back to a nice clean plate except for where i get a little couple of crumbs um speaking of divots make sure you store this back in the clamshell because if you store it for any length of time with like a brayer on top of it this will press in it will impress a divot or a mark based on uh, you know if it's like this or if you have a, p a pencil or something it'll make an indentation in this so this is something you want to put back in the clamshell so it doesn't get any indentations because then you get white spots in your prints but speaking of white spots, if you have brayer edge lines like this or specks or spots like that, do not worry about it because we're going to add multiple layers to this sheet. And through layering, any of those striations or marks are going to go away. So sometimes people ask me, especially about the edge of the brayer, but you don't have to worry about that at all because we're going to be layering and it's going to get absorbed in the layers. Okay, so our second sheet, this is going to be for the ghost prints and the cleanup. Same color, Nickel Azo Gold. This is very yellow, but it is brown, if that makes any sense. Um, it's a very light yellowy brown, and I like to start when I'm doing browns or any color of layering for that matter. I start with a light colored solid, and then I layer down to darker. So let's get that corner. And again, you can see this paper is pulling and sticking to the plate and pulling off all the paint. We have completely clean plate and another beautiful sheet of Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Okay, so we've got two sheets we're gonna work with. Those are our base sheets. Okay, find a place here on this desk. So the first print, uh, the first layer that I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do the chunky spirals and I'm gonna use the iridescent bronze. This is pretty much an opaque color. You can't really see those black tick marks on the container in front of it like you can with the Nickel Azo Gold. Nickel Azo Gold is really translucent, but the bronze is not. So that means the bronze is going to block out this color completely. And if we put it on top on a last layer, it's gonna block out everything below it because it is opaque. So I like to use bronze on the first layer so that I can layer the second layer on top of it and sort of 
interrupt it and break it up rather than having that bronze pattern on the top blocking out everything underneath it, okay? You'll see what I mean. So I like to use my metallics on my lower layers so that I can have translucent colors on top of them that will allow things to show through. Okay, so here's our bronze. There's still a little nickel azo gold in my brayer because I did not roll it off on a clean sheet. That's fine. It's all in the same color family. So we're going to start with chunky spirals. We're going to put that down and I'm going to print it onto my light colored solid. This is my intended print. So the first one that gets the positive spiral image, this is going to be the one that I am intending. My ghost prints that I pile up on the cleanup sheet can be and often are just as interesting or better. Sometimes better. Sometimes what you are don't intend comes out better than what you do. So you can see how the rice paper, because it's malleable and um, kind of more like fabric than paper, um, goes down in between all the spaces and chunky spirals. So you can see that you're going to get a really good print here because that paper is bending and flexing and going down into that whole pattern. Okay, so here, look at that glorious color combination. Beautiful bronze that ended up, a, got, got a little bit gold because of the Azo gold in the brayer. Um, but look at that. Oh my goodness. My goodness. I love that. Okay. So now we've got a, a ghost print. We're going to take that second sheet that we already prepared and we're going to pull that ghost print while it's still wet. So it's going to leave a little bit behind. Ooh, look at that. But this is a nice soft print. You can see that the, the intended print is very bold, crisp um, edges. And this one is softer, more painterly, um, softer edges and uh, a little more subtle. So oftentimes the ghost print is um, more interesting than the first print. So I have a feeling we're going to get two amazing sheets of paper out of this process. Okay. So now I'm going to go over that with the racing spots. The racing spots are going to interrupt the spirals, but the paint is going to be translucent, so the spirals will show through it. That's the difference with the translucent and the opaque. If I did the opaque iridescent bronze on top, I would not see anything through it. So here I'm going to use the Burnt Umber Light. So we're going to put out a layer of that. A nice thin layer. Now, as far as if you're new to gel printing, you want a nice thin layer of paint, okay? If you roll your brayer and it's sliding and slipping and the paint's going over the edges, that's too much paint. If you roll your brayer and it's removing the paint and you get a clean plate behind it, that's not enough paint. So when, you, um, when you're working, just keep in mind you want a nice thin layer and you get the hang of that pretty quickly. Okay, so now we're going to put racing spots into the Burnt Umber Light. And we're going to take our first intended print and put that through the racing spots stencil. Now, the ghost print of the Racing Spot stencil is really different than the first print because it's definitely a stencil. This one, like I said, it could be a mask, it could be a stencil, so the ghost print is very similar uh, to the first print, but this one, you're going to see the ghost print is very different. Okay, so again, we're getting the paper down in between all the spaces in the stencil. You can see that with the rice paper. And then I'm going to look i'm going to pull it up and peek and make sure i got a good print and here we have the beautiful racing spots on top of the chunky spirals you can see whoops you can see the metallic through the burnt umber light i think i want to put another layer on here so are you getting the idea that the best way to create complex gel prints is to layer, 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 layer? I feel like you could never have enough layers. Okay, so now we're going to lift this up. We've got this um, kind of interesting ghost print, and we're going to put that on our second sheet.
and you see that is quite the opposite of the first print and you can see the spirals through that as well so that is definitely opposite all right, so now I want to go one layer darker. So I'm going to bring back the chunky spirals, I think, because they're just a great pattern. And I think I want to go one layer darker. So let's use, let's pull out another color. I'm going to just grab a little bit of Van Dyke Brown because that will darken down just a little bit to darken down my burnt umber light so I can get another layer that's a little bit darker than the previous one. So I'm gonna stir with the brayer. Oh shoot, I've, I put a little, um... all right. Okay, I had to clean that off because it ended up with a little bit of the um, metallic in it. And I really want that, uh, that blend to be just dark without the metallic. So again, Van Dyke Brown, Burnt Umber Light. I grabbed a different brayer so I don't have to worry about cleaning them. I've got two. I like to have two for that reason. So this one's got the metallic in it. I'm going to just set that aside and use the one without. Okay, and now we're gonna come back with Chunky Spirals again. And I'm gonna try really hard not to let the pattern line up. So I want it to be going in the opposite direction. So I see that big spiral there, which is the big spiral here. So I'm not gonna put it this way. I'm gonna put it that way. I'm gonna flip it. So my spirals are not lining up. I do that with all stencils. When I layer them over themselves, I try to flip the paper in the opposite direction. So we get two sets of patterns that aren't on top of each other. Okay, so here's that darker version of brown and I brought the spirals back on top. So I've got spirals on racing spots on spirals and I love the layers of that. It's just really looking good. It's got a little paint uh, build up like it's a little heavy in places, so I'm just going to do that. I transferred a little bit of that. So there, look at that. That is just a beautiful layered print. And let's just do the ghost print on here, our cleanup sheet. And there we've got a totally different layered print. And quick, quick, I'm going to take that sheet that I cleaned the plate with and transfer this leftover. Well, it's still sort of wet, so we got most of that. So that's another layer. That's another sheet for more layers. But here is our cleanup kind of ghost print sheet, which has a lot of wonderful layers and color in it. And here is our intended sheet with great layers of color in it. Brown, bronze, nickel azo gold and then our last step is to add the glitter gel see i didn't forget so we're going to take out the palette knife and we're just going to spread that like butter and you can just angle your knife and put on as much or as little as you want i don't want to block out my pattern so i'm just putting a, a little i'm scraping it so that i can just have a light layer of it that's not too much, but it's gonna add just another dimension to this beautiful, look at that, that's just beyond beautiful. Look at that. This beautiful kind of brown metallic. And you might say that's a little busy for landscape for trees. Um, and maybe it is, and it's not, it's more kind of a golden brown, but this, is a little more subdued, but we're not gonna leave it subdued for long because I'm gonna put the glitter on that as well. So this one is a little darker, the pattern's a little denser, but the gold glitter gel looks beautiful on it as well. And like I said, don't forget, set these aside and let them dry. Don't stack anything on top of them because that gel 
glue takes a little bit longer to dry than you would think. Just scrape the excess back and make sure you put the lid on really tight. Um, otherwise they dry out. Um, and yeah, so again, when this dries, it's gonna be, it's flexible. You tear it and you flex it and that glitter does not flake off at all. It's suspended in that gel glue and it stays put. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did and I hope you'll give it a try. And um, don't forget the rice paper is on sale until the 19th and uh, happy Friday. Happy Friday, thanks for being here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and you will try it at home. All the supplies, remember, are listed below, including the name of that glitter gel that the font was so small I couldn't even see. And um, consider subscribing to the channel and also maybe think about joining me on Patreon. I have bazillions of gel printing videos and more on Patreon. So check it out, patreon.com slash Elizabeth St. Hilaire.